Good morning. Here's Red Robin Farm and I'm Mary Catherine. It's such a beautiful day. Look at the sunshine out there. 75 degrees, sunny and clear. And I'm so sorry to those of you who are still having harsh winter weather and blizzards. Today I'm plying yarn. I have two different rolls of yarn here that I have spun, which means I have put twist into them. And I'm going to take two of them and ply them together, which means you retwist them together as you put them back onto the spinning wheel, back onto the bobbin. When you do this, in order to kind of balance out the twist you've already put into both of those yarns, you're going to spin the spinning wheel the opposite direction. We're going to spin it this way today. And one thing I discovered when I plied my yarn was that um, I was really struggling to keep my spinning wheel running. The, especially the drive band kept on coming off when I would try to ply, and I didn't know why I was having so much trouble. And then I wondered if maybe when you make the wheel go in a reverse direction, you also have to put the drive band on kind of in a reverse way. Usually when I put the drive band on, I have these two pieces of cotton yarn. This is all one long piece of yarn. The dry band is actually, it's a double dry band, but it's one piece of cotton yarn. And I've attached it. I could probably find the little joint where I've attached it. So it's basically in a figure eight, okay, as it's on here. And normally you put the dry band on and it comes off of these two whirls and these two go straight back into these two shafts, grooves, and run around. But at some point, of course, they have to cross. The two uh, strings do. And usually that cross is down here. And so I wondered if when I ply and it's going the opposite direction, perhaps I need to load the drive band a different way and have the two parallel strings on the bottom that go into the grooves. And then it goes around and have the cross here at the top. And sure enough, when I made that change, the plying went swimmingly, I'm glad to say. Um, one more thing I thought I would say about plying yarn that only occurred to me about a half hour ago as I was prepping this little video and thinking about it, is that I could also take yarn like this, yarn that I have. These two yarns are the same brand, same weight, they're only different in, in color. I made a scarf for my son out of this. That's a really pretty yarn. And I just finished the scarf I was making out of this. And oh my goodness, I like it so well. I think I'm going to keep it for myself. And I wondered if I... Now these are just regular weight, worst, lightweight worsted yarns. But I think I could fit them through the orifice on this um, spinning wheel. And I could ply them together. And look how fun that would be. Let me just set the camera down. And I want you to see... I, I'm going to set it against this white... Um, so that you can see what it'll look like. But wouldn't that be fun to have the brown and the purple together, or purple and white, just green and white? I mean, any colors. I have so much yarn. As long as it was not already a bulky weight, I think it would need to be this weight or less. But it would just give me a bulky yarn, and then I could... Um, some of you have knitted with two strands before, but what if they were plied together and had some twist? Wouldn't that be fun and easier to work with? So that's another thing that I could do with my spinning wheel. It's really a wonderful machine. So I'm gonna I'm gonna ply a little bit. I'm gonna try. Whoops! I'm gonna try to set this camera up without dropping it on the floor. Let me see if I can get to where you can see. Oh, I forgot to explain my box. People have fancy machines to help them ply. I got a shoe box. Uh, this is a nice sturdy shoe box from Polo, and I put a hole here, and a hole here, and a hole on the opposite side, and ran two knitting needles through it, and so I've got a nice little post here that won't go through, and I took two wine corks and used my husband's um, drill to put um, a nice hole in there so that I can poke the knitting needle into them, and so these hold... These hold my yarns before as I ply them, uh, keep them feeding off well. This is also the reason why I kind of sp splay out the ends of my toilet paper tubes here that they're loaded onto so that the yarn doesn't slip off the end and get all wacky. We'll hope we don't have any trouble like that today. 
I've just started the plying to make sure that it was going to work smoothly so I wouldn't waste your time with mistakes. All right, let's see if we can get this. Oh, that looks like it might, might stay. Hmm. I'm so sorry. Well, I've got this resting on there. Maybe that'll work. Okay. And this goes so much faster than spinning. It really is quite amazing. You just have to watch as you feed it in. And spin in the opposite direction. And usually you keep a finger or a hand or whatever in between the two yarns to keep them separated until right before they go in. Again, you want to manage you want to watch it to make sure that it's feeding as quickly as you want to and not backing up here at the orifice. If it starts to bunch up and back up here, you know you have a problem loading onto the bobbin. And you want to have enough, enough twist in it that the yarn is, is well twisted, but you don't want it to be too kinky, okay, and start doing big ponytails. So you want to make sure that it's strong. See, there's a, there's a oh, that's just a little piece of something. I'll try to work that in there. Yeah. Usually the pony, the pigtails, the, the really extra twisty spots, happen where the yarn is the thinnest, and they usually happen in the yarn that I've already done. They don't usually happen in the plied yarn, thankfully. Um, okay, let's keep on going. This is such a nice, easy thing to do. I had one spinning friend tell me that plying was her favorite thing to do because after all the hard work of spinning, especially if you get raw fleece and you wash it <laughs> and you pick it and you comb it and you diz it and you uh, into roving. I see there I've got a bit, bit of a bunch and I've got more twist. I'm getting too much twist and I don't want to slow down my treadling. That's where the twist comes from. But I want it to feed faster. So I'm going to increase my tension just a little bit and see if that helps. Okay. The problem is probably that I'm talking. It's still not going as fast as I would like. And it may be that I need to pull. And it's a big problem. It's probably, oh, well, look here at my bobbin. Look how full it's gotten. I have to remember that this is twice the thickness of the yarn that I spun because it's two of them. I should have been watching this better, but we will move up. Let's, um, sometimes I have to think about which way the wheel would be spinning. I want to feed this onto here. I don't want to reply this that I just pulled off a little bit because then it'll even have more twist in it and I don't want more twist. This is, it really loads on very loosely. go from there and see and get past that bunchy part. Sometimes when you have big bunchy parts that's what catches on these hooks and it would be nice if I had new hooks. I don't really know how to do that myself and um, as I've said before we're a low-cost operation so I really um, can't pay for somebody else to do the work. Now see here is, see that? There's a pigtail. Mm. Oh, as I was saying a big part of my problem is just I haven't done this very much. Mm -hmm. Usually I would try to pull this back out. There we go. Oh, that worked better than I was expecting. <laughs> Alright, let's go. Happen to do it hand over fist here. Oh, that's just a fuzzy. Okay. Some of these are just fuzzies, and as I've shown you in some of the specialty novelty yarns I've got, they um, they make yarns intentionally with those little, f that look like um, locks. They're called locks, like a lock of hair, but a lock from um, the sheep. And uh, I think I'll stop, move this down again, okay, so it doesn't get too bunchy on that bobbin. Probably I will not be able to fit all of this on this bobbin because these two um, skeins that are in my box down here, each one of them was a full bobbin, which means that together, especially with this loose load, that's going to be two bobbins worse. So I'm going to have to stop halfway through and unfortunately I'm going to have to cut my yarn um, 
but that's just what happens when you have an old spinning wheel. Look how wonderfully fast this is. And again, what this is doing is reversing and kind of compensating for the first twist in the yarn. So this should be yarn that um, generally will hang. Um, this is really going fast. It will, it will hang um, straight and won't bunch up. I'm trying to use it. Adam has been saving um, avocado pits for me. As we get into summer, we eat a lot of guacamole and we use a lot of cilantro, so we buy a lot of avocados and he saves the pits. What I discovered last time is that a fresh avocado pit gives you wonderful color if you use it to dye, as a natural dye for your yarn. But an old avocado pit doesn't really give you much color. So I guess as they dry out, see that's still not feeding as fast as I would like. I'm going to crank that tension up just a little bit and move this down again. You can load this however you want. And I do think that after the bobbin gets a little more heavily loaded, it doesn't um, go as smoothly. So that may be part of my problem. I am, as I've said, a beginner and a novice, and um, I'm just learning. Oh, the other thing I wanted to mention about plying yarn is that if you are like me and you're just learning how to spin your yarn, and some of your yarn is a little thick, but some of it gets really thin, one of the benefits of um, plying is that the two ply together, again, compensates for those weaknesses in your yarn, and any really thin spots will have the added weight of the other yarn that you're plying with to help um, help those spots not break. So that's going to catch right there. I'm doing a better job remembering to turn my wheel the correct direction for plying. I used to sometimes forget. Now this bobbin is just about full. I don't like to push it. See? See, here's the edge of the bobbin, and it really is pretty much full. I hate to stop, and I hate to cut my yarn. It's a terrible thing, but it is what it is. So there we go. Oh. Since I've already got this on, you can see I'm going to have to reload all of this. Oh my goodness. Um, when I, I hope you can see all this. When I take the bobbin off, I loosen the tension, which allows me to lift these the dry band off. And that's going to be a pain to put on again, but it is what it is. Then I loosen um, the flyer from one leather. And, and I want you to see this. I don't know if you can see this. See on the wheel, there's a chipped part right here. That part of the wheel is always facing the flyer whenever I'm taking it off. And those chips occurred over 200 years by women who were in a hurry popping this off with the flyer turned this way and scratching it. Because it really won't fit through. You have to turn the plot flyer this way in it so it's narrow. But what that means is that for all this time, this wheel is slightly imbalanced. And when it comes to a resting position, after you're spinning and you're taking your flyer off, this side is always facing here. Isn't that just, uh, that's just fun. I don't know, call me weird, but I like those little intricacies of life where you can look at an old object and you can see the behaviors of the people who have been dead for a hundred years because it's on the object. Okay, well, enough of that. Can you tell I was a teacher? I taught literature, but I do love history. So now I'm going to take the um, the whirl off. Okay, it screws off. And then I'm going to lift my bobbin out. There's the flyer. I hope that the camera is showing this. I'm trying to hold it in a good position. Here's the Teflon tape that I keep on there regularly to make it so that the whirl is a little tighter and behaves as I want it to. <coughs> Um, do I have more time? I do. Okay. This is another thing that I use. I put this, uh, I'm not going to use it today, but usually after I've spun yarn, I put this through, this is an old distaff and it has a hole on it. Um, so I'll put this here and I'll, I'll spin this off of, I'll, I'll take this off of here and load it onto a toilet paper roll. But I'm not going to do that today because I don't want this on a toilet paper roll. I want to um, take it off of here and measure it. 
and uh, wash it and then I'm going to dye it. I might actually tie it to the next batch that comes off so it's one long piece before I do any of that. I do have to take it off but I'm not going to take it off onto a um, onto a toilet paper roll. I'm going to pick up the camera and I'll show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to put that plied yarn onto the back of a chair and these are chairs we got years ago You'll get kick, a kick out of my silliness. I just take the yarn and I go from one post on the back to the other and I go around and around and I've measured how far that is so that as I um, basically am putting it into a longer skein um, I know exactly how much I have. We have one chair in the house. It's irritated me for 20 years that one of these knobs comes off so easily but it's such a blessing. It's the chair that's in the living room that my husband sits in and so then after I wrap all this yarn, yards and yards of yarn around here, it's easy to take it off because I just pop that top off. <laughs> so anyway, um, I'm trying to think of anything else I wanted to tell you about today. I guess that's about it. If you missed the pumpkin and the littlest mouse video that I read yesterday, I actually read the story and turned the pages and showed the illustrations. That's on YouTube as well. This book is still for sale for $10 in the U.S. That includes postage. Um, so if you'd like a copy, or if you are interested, look at the video and um, let me know what you think. All right, thank you so much for uh, joining me as I plied my yarn. Bye-bye.